Hong Kong never stops. Millions of its people traverse the city every day in what's underneath the ground, the Mass Transit Railway, or the MTR. Doors will open on the left. It embodies what the city of Hong Kong is about, advanced, efficient, and professional. Oh, I take the MTR pretty much every day. We explore why it literally came under fire from rioters during the 2019 Hong Kong protest. Today, Hong Kong looks forward. So is the MTR. Finally, we are going to show you why after the dust settled, the MTR might play a bigger role in the city's future than you'd think. And it's not even about the subway. This is the extraordinary journey of the MTR. Thank you for traveling on the MTR. This station belongs to the first subway line that opened in Hong Kong. We need to start with the history of the city's subway system. After World War II ended in 1945, Hong Kong's population skyrocketed from some 500,000 people to about 3 million in just 15 years. The city was on its way to becoming one of the most densely populated in the world. But before the 80s arrived, Hong Kong had just one rail line, and the subway was non-existent. The city's transportation system needed a major upgrade. So the local government, under British control, formed a subway company in 1975 and began digging down. Something more radical was required, something that could take its passengers to a variety of destinations in the shortest possible time. Something fast. Four years later, residents got their first ride on the metro. As new lines were added, the journey across Victoria Harbour, which used to take hours, could be done in minutes. I take almost all the lines, pretty much. Well, when I was a little girl, I remember I could recite all the station's names. But nowadays, they have a lot of new lines open. This was what the subway system looked like in 1997 when Hong Kong was handed back to China. This is what it looks like today. The 2007 merger of two local operators gave rise to the present MTR Corporation, now a listed conglomerate with the Hong Kong government being the majority shareholder. Today, its system boasts over 260 kilometers of rail and carries more than 4 million passengers per weekday. In fact, the building of the subway was solving another age-old problem. As a subtropical coastal city, Hong Kong is subject to heavy summer monsoon rains and typhoons that often paralyze road traffic. Not any longer. I think whenever there's a shopping mall there, there's always an MTR station right next to it, which is very convenient. You can just go from the train station right to your apartment without well, even if it rains, without getting wet. This is what we call integrated development. We're able to plan seamless connections between transport and other uh, urban uh, facilities, urban infrastructure. As a result, MTR is pretty much everywhere in Hong Kong and has become an integral part of people's lives. But many Hong Kong residents' sentiments toward the MTR had become a bit complicated in 2019. If you follow world events that year, you probably saw something like this. The Hong Kong subway used to boast a 99.9% .9 punctuality rating. Now, trains rarely arrived on time. That year, the MTR, like the whole society of Hong Kong, was minding a gap. Please mind the gap. The 
feeling deep anger against the government, some extremist rioters turn to vandalism to get their message across. <laughs> Roads, university campuses, and especially MTR stations became their most popular targets. This was one of the most vandalized stations at the time. MTR authorities said it needed to be almost completely refurbished. We went to Chaiwan Station to visit someone who experienced all these things firsthand during that period. Mak Pui Dong had worked for the MTR Corporation for more than 30 years and was the administrator of this station in 2019. <laughs> But in the early days of the 2019 protest, the MTR wasn't the prime target. So why was it reviled by rioters later on? Well, they claimed it was about revenge for two specific incidents. On the night of a major organized march, a violent incident was brewing in the Yunlong MTR station. In the late evening, a group of men dressed in white rushed in. They said they had had enough of the black-clad rioters and vowed to protect their homelands. Things quickly turned physical. About a month later, in Prince Edward Station, some protesters got into arguments with passengers and fights again broke out. Riot police came in and exercised force to put an end to the situation. Video clips of both incidents went viral. People were shocked. Immediately, the opposing political camps in Hong Kong went into a bitter bickering war about the exact causes and details and who was to blame. As the rift deepened, the MTR, the setting for both incidents, found itself caught in the crossfire, with some accusing it of not doing enough to prevent them from happening. In August 2019, the MTR released a statement saying it would temporarily close stations if, quote, fights, vandalism, or other acts of violence occur. To rioters, this was definite proof that the company was undermining their strategy of be water, a term which generally means to be fluid and flexible at all times and involved using the subway to evade police crackdown. <laughs> As the protests became more violent, MTR staff feared for their own safety. On September the 4th, an angry group stormed Po Lam Station, vandalizing along the way. They were demanding to have a talk with the station master about why it was closed during a previous protest. They tracked down the station chief, and things escalated quickly. Hong 
咁就不幸喺路上遇到咁嘅事件啦。自己一個認識好多年嘅同事，誒心痛啦，同埋咧有少少嬲。The extreme factions have declared war on the MTR. 我哋冇做成，有機會佢身亡，以前冇係死人嘅啫。The notion was if we burn, you burn with us. From June 12 to November the 24th of 2019, over 90% of MTR stations saw various levels of vandalism. We every day every day some people were throwing objects and even petrol bombs at the rails. Some people block train doors, others just simply refuse to buy tickets. What eventually put a quick and decisive stop to all these was the passing of the National Security Law in June 2020, under which anyone who still engaged in such kinds of vandalism for political purposes would be indicted. The effects were almost immediate. The national security law has brought back security, no doubt about it, right? Hong Kong has really come back to what we used to be a very secure place, and we have good confidence that we can control the threats. So Hong Kong people can go about their normal life. 国安法实施之后咧，啊，感觉到啊，天朗气清啦，咁心情都唔同咗，相对就冇嗰种压抑啦。咁嗰段时间咧，呢个站长室呢个外边嘅玻璃屏幕咧，直情系揾一个钢丝网咧，系围起咗佢咧，诶，防止俾人哋破坏嘅。咁而家咧，你见到已经拆除咗，完全冇晒呢啲痕迹啦。Hong Kong is slowly returning to its former self, with busy office commuters and restless street market vendors. Only sporadic burn marks at MTR station entrances and covered graffiti on the street remain from the violence of 2019. The turbulent times may have passed, but Hong Kong is far from free of major societal problems. Hidden behind the modern skyscrapers of downtown is one of the highest income disparity rates in the world. This is Samsheipo, a relatively low income district, where you can find rows of old apartments with the infamous subdivided flats. Some experts have attributed sky-high home prices as one of the major causes of social discontent in Hong Kong. In her last policy address, Hong Kong Chief Executive Carrie Lam focused a lot on the housing problem. The MTR Corporation could have an important role to play in its resolution. But wait, you might say, isn't MTR a subway company? What does it have to do with housing? Here's how it works. When a new station is being planned, the government grants the MTR undeveloped lands above and around the site at the predetermined premium. As the station is built, the company draws in other real estate firms to develop malls and residential projects there and then shares the profits afterward to pay for the costs. The MTR Corporation calls it the Rail Plus Property Model. 
Although the combination of high-rise towers with operational facilities was unique at the time, it proved to be well-conceived and profitable. This is Francis Lam, who previously worked for the MTR Corporation and led part of the planning for the airport railway. For example, for the airport railway, um, after the final account, we found the profits from uh, property development could contribute more than half of the, the total cost, and that was amazing. Take a look at this press release. In the first half of 2021, MTR's recurring business profit was about 900 million Hong Kong dollars, but some 3 billion came from property development. Legislator Regina Ip is one of the most prominent advocates of calling on the government, the biggest shareholder of the MTR, to allocate some of the company's residential units as part of the city's subsidized housing program. In essence, a public utility, we ought to impose a scheme of control. And when we have worked out the estimated profits, they should claw back the profits. Not so much in the, in the form of cash dollars, but in the form of housing. And we should allow Hong Kong's middle class to apply for those housing. It's something MTR says it's doing on Lantau Island of Hong Kong. Now the res residential part of the project will eventually uh, give us 20,000 uh, apartments. Half of them will be uh, public housing. The corporation should have a bigger role in Hong Kong. It depends on the government's um, directive and see how it could make use of this company to achieve the government's objectives better because it is really owned by the governments. That means owned by the people of Hong Kong. What would also create more housing is the Hong Kong government's new objective to develop new rail lines in the northern part of Hong Kong. This area is called New Territories in the northern part of the city. See, Hong Kong's housing problem is not really about a lack of land. According to the Hong Kong-based South China Morning Post, Developers are known to hold over a thousand hectares of land here, but they have been holding off on new projects, partly blaming a lack of transport infrastructure. In her policy address, Carrie Lam envisioned a plan to build a 300 square kilometer northern metropolis in the new territories. In Hong Kong, we're here to implement the transport policy and the urban development policy of Hong Kong government. So in the next few years, we'll be spending well over 100 billion Hong Kong dollars into building new railway lines in the northern part of new territories. The government's plans are at the very early stage. If they can be followed through and bring more development to northern Hong Kong, then they could have even more significance. The area borders Shenzhen, China's high-tech hub. China has been promoting more connectivity among Hong Kong, Macau and nine mainland cities in a strategy called the Greater Bay Area. With a new MTR high-speed rail launched in 2018, going from Hong Kong to Guangzhou, the capital of Guangdong province, takes less than 50 minutes. So this is MTR. It's transformed Hong Kong enormously. This station was opened in June 2021. It is part of a 56-kilometer-long new rail line, which on its opening day excited so many residents that it inspired one of the hottest internet memes in Hong Kong this year, reaching over a million views on YouTube. Regardless if you get the humor in this clip, it is obvious that despite the MTR's share of controversies, many Hong Kong people's love for their railways is here to stay. After the dust from 2019 settled, 
Hong Kong is moving towards a deeper integration into the country's economic trajectory. The MTR is going to play a part in carrying the city forward in that direction.